Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. So I am finally bringing you guys my KOD album review. So as I mentioned previously, uh, I don't like to rush through my reviews. I know that's like not the typical internet standard, um, but I like to really take my time and give albums quite a few listens before I review them. Like I like to listen to them in my headphones. I like to listen to them at home, um, in my speakers. I like to listen to them in my car, I like to really think about the lyrics and the production value, and, and I like to get into all that stuff. So um, I said though that the KOD album review was coming this week, and so here it is. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. I loved this album. Um, I didn't used to be like a J. Cole fan. He really had to like grow on me. I did not really like any of his work. Like I recognize that J. Cole was just like a talented rapper, like like technically speaking, but his work just didn't really do anything for me um, really until 2014 Forest Hills Drive, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, For Your Eyes Only, I didn't hear the whole thing from start to finish. It didn't really grab me, but KOD, this one I loved. I loved it from start to finish. I, I definitely loved that it was a concept album. I always like have a soft spot sort of for concept albums, and I feel like People don't do them enough, and half the time when they do them, they're not really well executed. Like, American Gangster by Jay-Z is a concept album, and it's like, that's what, like, a concept album should be. So, this one was a concept album um, in several different ways. One being the addiction concept. Um, so, the whole, every single song from beginning to end is about addiction and various types of addiction and the way that we're... Um, using these addictions as coping mechanisms to deal with trauma like even from the beginning it's like you know we feel we feel all this pain and we figure out ways to deal with the pain so like choose wisely right so but not even just like the addiction concept but sonically the sound is conceptual like the production was like super fucking top notch and utilizing which J. Cole is not the first person to do this like Kendrick Lamar has also done this Jay-Z also did this same thing on 444 this idea of using like mumble rap or um trap like the trap sound even as a concept like as a conceptual sound like i'm gonna like jay-z going i get the skirt with your bitch cool story you know like he's using that in a certain type of way and you have j cole doing the exact same thing here and just the production like the production i fucking like mumble rap i like bass god i feel like little b was like one of the fucking creators of like the mumble rap the offbeat rap um obviously you have fucking jeezy you had ti you had gucci Mane, who were fucking ogs of trap the trap sound i like trap music i like fucking mumble rap and i feel like the production on this album is quality like the majority of like trap records and fucking mumble rap records like the, produ the production is like amazing like the production fucking bangs and i feel like people really underestimate the value of good production because i'm sorry but like you could be like rapidly rap rapping your ass off but like if the production is some garbage i'm not gonna be listening to like no bass and like oh I, i'm like i'm not gonna listen i really don't care sorry so the production was great the content was fucking incredible like my friend was like oh it made me feel like dimly introspective which is true like it did make me feel like introspective and there are some songs especially in the second half of the album it slows down a bit um that got even maybe like a little bit too personal and too intense and too introspective but this is what he decided to do with his art um but i just felt like it fucking like it, it knocked really like a lot of the songs fucking knock so you have songs that knock but also the content and the subject matter is there as well which not everybody can do which is something that I said in my Nicki Minaj video something that I like about what, what Nicki does is she's giving you fucking word she's not just giving you like great production or like catchy ass hooks but she's also giving you like wordplay she's a fucking this this poke it out verse on this playboy cardi is that's probably the best verse of the year thus far. Like, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. Like, she's giving you fucking metaphors. She's giving you fucking double and triple entendre. She's giving you wordplay, but it's still fucking catchy. J. Cole did the exact same thing on this album. I also want to say that 
this album, uh, especially like the first couple songs and the use of like the intros, um, reminded me and the little bridges and interludes and stuff reminded me a lot of Section 80 by Kendrick Lamar. It gave me a Section 80 vibe. Um, Kendrick Lamar when he was still good before he like went up to the mountain and took the Moses Jesus tablets with him. So anyways, uh, the first track, so I'm not going to do good, the bad and the ugly format, obviously. Um, I, most of the time for my uh, album reviews, I like to just go through track by track. It's just easier that way than to do good, the bad, and the ugly format. If you guys are new, I know a lot of you guys are new. You haven't seen too many of my review videos. Generally, I do the good, the bad, and the ugly, especially for books and movies and TV shows, but um, for albums that have like clear track listings to like separate, I just prefer to go track by track. So we already talked a little bit about the intro. Um, I thought the intro was really, really good. Again, it gave me like a section 80 vibe. It set the tone of the album album from right there it introduced you to this theme of addiction and like what are you using to numb your pain basically like choose wisely so I really fucked with that the next track was called KOD was the title track and I remember thinking while I'm listening to it it's funny because on the one hand I was like people are probably gonna say that like oh like what is this subject matter like oh J. Cole is like making fun of because it's a lot of like the subject matter is like getting money and fucking bitches and this and that and like people are gonna try to say that like oj cole is like making fun of the mumble rappers or like the trap rap and i was like no i was like it's funny because like this is what j cole has always said like a lot of this content like j cole has always talked about fucking mad bitches like j cole has always talked about getting money it's just like j cole was considered to be like a rapidy rap type rapper right like but a lot of this content is like what j cole has always said he's always said that he's the best he's always said that like he's that nigga like a lot of this shit he's always said but like what he's doing right now in terms of using the trap sound and using like the mumble flows he's using the mumble flows to in a way critique it to also critique himself because again this has been his subject matter but to also stand behind it in a way like the album and the songs like works on like so many different levels like there is a level of critique of like what's going on but uh, there is another level of like but the sound is good like this music is good like the trap sound is good the mumble rap is good y'all talk mad shit about it which we are going to get to obviously um in 1985 but like y'all are just hating like it sounds good the production is good like it's 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 not bad it's not bad music it's not bad art so i just felt like he's really like working like he number one i think that j cole finally like really 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 truly in his heart of hearts believes that he's that nigga because they always seemed that there was like just a little bit of doubt but now it seems like he really believes it and he's like elevated to this point of like i can like work on i could work my wordplay my flows my rhyme schemes on all these different levels i can like use the trap sound and the mumble sound to critique it but to also show at the same time that it is popping that the subject matter is not necessarily even a bad thing like it's a reason why so many people like listen to this genre like it's a reason behind it which i'm gonna get to a little bit more too so track three photographs so this one is about social media falling in love with someone especially through digital images and phone calls and how like the hook literally says like it's like messing with my head like i don't even know this person's name and like you don't even really know these people you know like you feel like you know them or or you do get to know them but even in, in a sense you're getting to know a version of them um and i felt like this song was actually really abstract i felt like it was even more abstract than it seemed on the surface level because it's just about like navigating digital spaces not real world spaces with real people like in real life but like digital spaces where Everybody can be whatever they want, um, which can be a challenge and how that's like fucking with people. And I say all the time, like, I feel like social media is like really fucking with people's brains. I don't know if I would say if it's like a good thing or a bad thing yet. I don't know if, there, if there's just been enough time to like know because social media is still so new. There hasn't been enough time to really know how this shit is going to impact, impact, excuse me, people in the long run and relationships and stuff like that. But like 
some of the shit that I see even on like YouTube and on social media platforms, like we've talked about before, like people not being able to listen or like not being able to pay attention or crafting these uh, personas that are not real and then not even knowing how to like be a real person in real life, I think is like really fucking fascinating. And I really do think that shit is like having an impact on people's brains. And I felt like every time I listened to this song photograph, I got like something different out of it. And I even feel like this entire album um, is a body of work that you can listen to over and over and over and get something different every time. Because again, it is extremely abstract. It is extremely multi-layered. It appears to be about certain things. And then you listen again and it has another meaning. You know, you listen to, to a song once and it seems like, ah, he's talking bad about, you know, uh, the mumble rappers. That's, that's like, oh, money, pussy parties. But then you listen to it again, and it's like, actually, I talk about money, pussy parties. So, like, you know, it's like working on different levels, you know, and then you listen to it a third time, and, and it's like, oh, actually, he's talking about how niggas didn't have shit, so they deserve to have some money and some pussy and some parties. And who are you to judge them? Like, it's working. Like, it's working. It's working. It's working. Like, he even said the title alone has, like, three different meanings. And, again, it definitely seems like... That was the overall approach to the album, just double and triple entendres metaphors. Again, like Hove, like Hove is like the goat of that, but Cole is like creeping, like he's creeping up there, like he's creeping. Um, and I also did want to say that again, a feeling that I got listening to Photograph um, and ATM even at Motivate was that this album reminded me of Anti by Rihanna in a way that I think it will also make listeners a little bit uncomfortable, like precisely because of like the abstractness, um, you aren't 100% sure what you're listening to. So I felt like J. Cole was like really pushing himself creatively and artistically. Um, and I really did respect that. So next track, track four was The Cutoff, which was featuring Kill Edward, who I've never heard of before. Um, but and there's another song with Kill Edward, Friends, I believe, also has him on it. And for some reason, to me, he sounds like Pharrell, uh, which I felt like I heard a lot of Pharrell influence on this album, a ton of Most Def influence, which I, I love Most Def. Like, I love fucking Yesin. He's on my top, he's in my top five. And I feel like he has, like, influenced, like, so much. He's, like, really underrated, in my opinion, just in terms of, like, his influence, especially when it comes to, like, you know, conscious conscious rap and subject matter and talking about you know you're talking about mathematics you're talking about the political nature of things and then the next song might be miss fat booty like most death was like good for that and you have a lot of people that in my opinion are walking in his footsteps right now and he's not necessarily always um getting his just due for that so there was a lot of like stuff that reminded me of most death also on this album so the cutoff was one of my favorite tracks um, it was about people using them, people using J. Cole specifically. Uh, Cole is obviously struggling with being used by friends and family. This theme comes up again in brackets. Um, it is another, again, consistent theme throughout the album, wanting to help people and struggling to find a way to do that without being used. Um, there were standout lines, tons of standout lines that I liked. He, uh, I'm dreaming violent. I can't tolerate disloyalty. Uh, I know the punishment for you is that you're not with me. I liked, I had to cut some people off cause they was using me. Um, just like, the, like the cutoff, like, again, using addiction, people using other people and using things and, you know, photograph, we're using social media, we're, we're filling holes in ourselves and dealing with various types of trauma by using all these other things and using people you know oh you call me up you need a loan or oh, I'm a crutch now you know like I now now you're 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 addicted to me to using me and me giving you money and being with me and the bitches that you got with me and and how do I you know time will tell who's on my side you know how will I how do I navigate this how do I navigate this really introspective, really, again, just like a great fucking hook. Um, the hook of the cutoff is also like, 
give me drink, give me smoke. If I die, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm just using all these things to try to, like, deal with what's happening to me. And, like, in terms of J. Cole specifically as an artist and as a successful artist, you know, like, how, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with this? How do I deal with this? Choose wisely. Um, again, all these different aspects and facets of addiction and the ways that we deal with pain and trauma. So I really did love... Um, the cutoff it was a standout track to me starting with the cutoff the next four tracks the cutoff atm motivate and kevin's heart are like my four favorite tracks on the album and then 1985 the last the last one i just felt like whatever like that groove was with those like four tracks and then 1985 was like a perfect groove the next one track five was atm which i literally was like this is a concept album like again in addition to fucking them thematically in terms of the addiction it is a concept album fucking sonically in terms of the sound and style of using trap rap and like mumble rap as a concept and i felt Felt like like especially with ATM a lot of the choices that Cole was making in terms of sound as well as the content was a huge part of what was really enabling him to make a critique uh, of the way that we deal with trauma that is not preachy or judgmental because J. Cole does have a tendency to get fucking preachy 100% but I think he has finally grown and matured as a person as a man as an artist he talks about being 33 years old now and married and like finally trying to like grow up and again even the concept of this album you know come to terms with come to a reckoning with these addictions and the way that he's dealing with this trauma and and and, and critique that and critique himself as well i feel like more than anything this album is about like j cole critiquing himself and then critiquing the immediate people around him the immediate people in his circle and almost using that as like as like you see by example like I don't even have to talk to like the masses in particular this is just me and my people and I'm sure you will be able to relate because we are all going through some shit which I feel like is is exceptional it's exceptional and I feel like that's like the way to reach people you know it's like I fuck with it like I fuck with it you know, J. Cole is like, I totally understand. Like, I fuck with you fucking, you know, spending mad money and like fucking mad bitches. And like, like, I, I fuck with all the concepts. I fuck with what you're doing. Like, because I know because like, I came from that same place too. And I did that exact same thing too. But at the same time, as somebody that's maybe a little bit older and wiser, I can also see that this is coming from a place of trauma. But I still fuck with it. Like, I still fuck with it, like it's like ATM, like you know, a uh, fucking stand stand out line on ATM. Then God, Mama couldn't afford the abortion, the loneliest orphan. Fuck it, I take the whole cake and I won't leave a portion. Like I flip my misfortune and grow me a fortune. Like who could hate on that? Like J Cole is basically saying, like who could hate on that? You got kids that are coming from trauma, that are coming from nothing, that are growing fortunes out of nothing. Who could hate on that? But at the same time. Let me let you know that this is coming from a place of trauma. And at a certain point, you're not going to be able to keep running from that trauma. You're going to have to deal with it. But I still fuck with it. I'm not judging anybody. Like, Cole is basically making an empathetic and a sympathetic critique. And it's fucking brilliant. Like, I really felt like ATM was like a brilliant track. I thought, like, this shit is mad brilliant. The whole album is fucking brilliant. ATM, motivate, you know, showing why, like black people because he also talks about white people separately but why black people especially that do fuck with the trap connect to it so hard like because it's relatable like it sounds fucking great like it's catchy as fuck it's relatable if you came from that place you know what those people are talking about you know like j cole is talking about the why he's digging down deep into the why he's not just wagging his fingers at people telling them what they can and can't do or should and should should not do he's digging into the why of why they're even doing those things like and it's finally not preachy and he's spitting like he's spitting like, you cannot deny that he is spitting his fucking ass off. And, again, just really delving into how the majority of the content in a lot of what's out right now is about trauma. Like, I have roaches in my granny crib. Like, I came a long way from having fucking roaches in my granny crib. Like, you can't tell me nothing. Like, you can't tell me fucking shit. And it's just, like, people talk so bad about mumble rap and trap rap. But, like, sorry, it's relatable. Like, the subject matter is relatable. The content is relatable. 
the trauma aspect of it is relatable. The beats are hard and people fuck with it. Um, now we can talk again, like we talked about in, in my Burning Sands review about the concept of bonding through trauma, how black people especially bond through traumatic experiences. But again, I like that Cole is not judging it. He's not judging anybody. He's using the format to show how hard the shit goes. Like the fucking tracks are hard as fuck. The content is hard as fuck. And he's also on another level again critiquing the why digging into the why of it and not just talking bad about it like i fucked with it i fucked with it the next track motivate same thing digging into how we use trauma to motivate like how we fucking use our addictions like how we are traumatized and that's playing out in these addictions addictions to money addictions to drugs addictions to girls you know pussy clothes jewelry all these things how we how how we're doing these things to numb the pain and to also try and find our value and self-worth in these things and motivate because we're fucking traumatized which it also reminded me of if you have not heard the song addiction by kanye west i would highly recommend listening to it i mean if you haven't heard that late registration album i please turn off the video right now because you're already on youtube and go listen to it but I even felt like this album was like walking in the footsteps of a late registration or again like that song specifically addiction of like what's your addiction is it money is it girls is it weed I've been afflicted but not one not two but all three and just like why are we doing this and how do we heal um what can we do what can we do next track Seven, Kevin's Heart, which is about sex addiction and Cole being a fucking cheater and cheating on his girl, who's not his wife, and using sex also as like a, a numb, a numbing technique, as a number, which a lot of niggas fucking do. Like, yes, like they fuck the pain away. Like fucking Jay-Z said, drinking the pain away, sexing the pain away. Like fucking Solange said, I tried to fucking sex it away, like using that shit as a as a as a numbing tool, you know, like even if he really loves the person that he's with, another addiction that's used to deal with trauma. And it's funny because and I would say that like an album like 444, an album like A Seat at the Table delved into a lot of these same themes of, of trauma and how we deal deal with trauma even in very different ways. Um, but somebody was like, oh. 444 and like the accompanying visuals was like Cheaters Anonymous. I was like, J. Cole is a member of Cheaters Anonymous. But we also know that this is all true. Like J. Cole has always said this. Like he has always talked about this type of fucking subject matter. But I definitely again have to say that he has just really matured. Like he's matured in his tone. He's matured in his delivery. He's matured in the way that he's talking. He's always had an awareness, but he's matured a lot in the way that he's talking about these issues and being just like more honest, more candid, more authentic more personal with like look i'm not fucking perfect either like i'm a fuck up too i'm fucking fucking up who am i to judge anybody like i'm not judging you i can't judge anybody because i'm a fuck up too which i really fucking appreciate um next track was brackets i feel like i have so much to say about this track essentially taxes are fucking whack which is 100 percent true j cole feels like they're stealing from us which is 100 percent true uh, he talks again, picking up on some of the themes in the cutoff about getting um, rich and entering into another tax bracket and being used by people, friends and family members especially, but people that also don't understand how much money he now has to pay in taxes, despite the fact that even as a rich person, he can't decide necessarily where that money goes. Um, like the system is rigged, like the system is rigged as fuck, that taxes are a scam basically, and that it's wild that we have to pay, especially as black people, but we have no personal say in where it goes. You know, we are black people that are systemically oppressed, but we are required by law to fund the system. We have to fund our own oppression, essentially. We have to put our money into the system that oppresses us. We're required. Or else they could garnish our wages, they can arrest us, they could throw us in jail. Like, it's sick. And we literally have no say in where our tax dollars go. Like, and people always say, you know, vote. 
um, and put in elected officials basically that you rock with, which J. Cole also mentioned, you know, oh, some older nigga told me to start voting. I said democracy is too fucking slow. Like, which I feel like even if you like believe in like voting and stuff like that, even then there's no way to agree with every elected official. There's no way to agree with every single point of every congressman. Like, you still have to concede on certain things. And even then it is. It's like, why he says, like, why can't I fucking select from an app on my screen? And it's like, why isn't there an app for me to fucking decide personally where my tax dollars are going to go? It is 2018. Let me select from a screen exactly what I want. Why do I even need an elected official to be a mouthpiece for me in 2018? It's not a bad question, especially when, as J. Cole talks about, you're in a certain tax bracket where you're like, he basically talks about how he feels like he's funding oppression. Like, you know, I pay so much money. I don't know where it goes. I sit back and I watch the politicians and I watch what's going on and I have no say, but I have to pay all this money. It's not fair. And the fact that J. Cole made that relatable is like a skill. Like that's a, like you made you being a rich motherfucker relatable to me. Like not everybody could do that. Uh, Track nine is an interlude, Once an Addict. This is about his mom being an alcoholic, addiction, uh, and using him as a crutch. It was very intense. <laughs> I can't listen to this one all the time. Um, he just talks about his mom being fucked up and how that fucked him up and how she used him from when he was a child as almost like a surrogate, a surrogate parent a surrogate a support a support system instead of like her being the parent her being the support system she made her child the support system and leaned on him so heavy which is very common um in addition to like her alcoholism and using alcohol as a crutch and then j cole also kind of relates that to how he started running in the streets and using the streets as as a as a numbing pain you know being addicted to being out in the streets because he don't want to be home because his mom is a drunk and she's a mean fucking drunk and and parents and how they fuck up kids and and especially the way that men black men especially get fucked up um by some of these parents and these moms um and what i thought was especially interesting about this track is that j cole's mom is white she's white and j cole has also talked about being abused uh by you know his white family because his mother raised him as a single parent he was the only you know black child in the family family and being raised in this trailer park basically in north carolina and being called a nigger and being abused and being tormented and and i think it's really interesting that j cole has never been linked to any white girls ever i kind of feel like this is almost a reverse of what we see with like certain black men that have issues with black women because their moms are black and they fuck them up j cole has a white mom that fucked him up and j cole seems like he feels very strongly about white people like i can't fuck with them crackers like he seems like he feels very very strongly about that and but this is the first track that i've ever heard from him that really like delved deeply into his childhood with a mom that could be considered abusive um very hard to listen to but another good song all the songs are good i feel like all the songs are good um the next track the 10th track uh also had kill edward or edwards however you pronounce that uh friends which again is about cutting, not cutting people off, but recognizing that number one, you have friends that are addicted, they're addicted to drugs, especially, they're fucked up, they're using, they're self-medicating, they're using illegal drugs uh, like weed and pills and, and he talks about people like dabbling and coke and stuff like that. He says like, I'm, I want to talk about addiction. I'm talking specifically to certain people. He like scrambles up their names. But it's like, I'm talking specifically to certain people like in my circle. I'm talking to, you know, everybody in the whole fucking Dreamville. Like, we have to talk about this. Like, I've been letting y'all slide because y'all my niggas, but like y'all are some addicts and you're addicted to to, to self-medicating instead of like dealing with your trauma um and I feel like I have to say something very deep like deeply personal again like just like the fucking track about his mom like deeply deeply personal 
Um, he gets into how we're all fucked up. So again, we all self-medicate in various ways, not necessarily just drugs. He also talks about how it's not our fault, how the trauma is not our fault, but we do have to deal with it ourselves. He lists like mad reasons why black people are fucked up. And then he says like to list all the reasons I need like 20 CDs, but it's essentially like that saying, like the trauma is not your fault. But like the healing is your responsibility. The dealing with the trauma is your responsibility. So how are you going to choose to deal? Choose wisely. There are some lines at the end that I feel like could be kind of misconstrued because he says um, meditate, don't medicate. I feel like this is just my interpretation. I feel like he's talking about like self-medication because the whole song has talked about illegal drugs like weed and coke and pills and stuff like that. I personally don't feel, and he also talks about like going to therapy and like talking to people. So I don't feel like this is an anti-therapy or an anti, you know, like you go to a doctor and a doctor prescribes you an antidepressant or something like that. I didn't feel because you guys know how I feel like about Janae Aiko fucking telling people to like get off their meds. Like, bitch, whoa, you don't have like chill. Like, cause if somebody gets off their fucking meds and like kills himself, like that's on you. I felt like he was, again, talking more to, like, the illegal self-medication that we do, again, with, like, sex and booze and weed and pills. But other people might have a different interpretation. That was just my interpretation. Um, the next track, Window Pain. Now, I to me, I felt like this was the weakest track. I felt like it was about violence in black communities. I felt like this one was leaning on preachy. I felt like it was still a good track, but it's slipping a bit back into his old uh, ways a little bit. Just this one song. Like, I could have just did without this whole one song. Because even in brackets, he talks about, like, violence and, like, gun violence and, like, guns in the community and stuff like that. I didn't really feel like Window Pain was super necessary. Um, it felt almost like... It felt almost like J. Cole had, like, a list of, like, addictions and, like, issues that he wanted to cover. Like, I want to cover sex addi addiction, illegal addiction to, like, drugs. I want to co cover alcoholism. I want to cover using people as an addiction. I want to cover um, being in gangs as an addiction and gun, you know, like relying on your gun as a way to like feel safe so to me window pane was almost a track that just got like thrown in because it like checked off it like checked off a box again still not a bad track but the weakest one and again starts getting a little bit preachy and then the outro 19 well it's not an outro 1985 i'm calling it an outro but 1985 which is the last track so apparently one of these like rappers like this j cole i don't know who it was i don't care who it was and important to me who it was so he basically the the theme of 1985 is like in 1985 i arrived like i'm 33 like i'm an og now basically so let me give some advice to the up-and-comers like oh you want to diss me like oh i'm surprised but like let me put my hand on my sh on your shoulder like come here little man like let me talk to you let me walk with you like everybody popping out with young i get it everybody says that the music that y'all make is dumb so you're pissed i get it I'm chilling, like, I'm, I'm just gonna talk to you. But it's also funny that, like, the old heads, like, J. Cole is 33, he's not that old. Like, but he's considered an old head. Like, Lil Durk is 26 and has been out 11 years already. Like, he's considered by some people to be, like, an old head. So it's just funny. Like, so J. Cole is, like, pointing out what's going on. How people be talking so bad about these kids and they trap rap and they mumble rap and talking about how their music is so dumb and talking about how their content is so stupid and like just talking bad about them like as if they were never kids, like as if they never had to learn how everybody knows every fucking thing. Like I respect the struggle, but you all front in these days, which I 100% fucking agree with completely. Everybody walking around like they know everything, like chill the fuck out and relax. And I respect him kind of like, putting on this mantle of an OG like I said it feels like he's maturing and really putting it on and he's talking he's talking not just to the other rappers and like the young up-and-coming rappers and stuff like that but he's talking to the fans he's talking to the stands he's talking to the ones that big up these people and then disappear on them fake ass fans you know what you're gonna do when that money dries up he's talking about building on shit that's real and not sandcastles but he goes out of his way again to say several times on this track I'm not judging you. Like, I'm not judging you. Like, I was on the same thing at your age. I'm not judging you. But as somebody that's older and wiser now and a little bit more mature, 
just let me talk to you. Like, I'm not knocking what you're doing, but let's also talk about, like, what's really going on here. Let's also talk about how we're all really fucked up, so we're just trying to numb the pain. Like, but that also doesn't mean that the music fucking sucks and it's as bad as people are trying to make it out to be either. Like, the whole... I feel like there is not a binary here. So many people fall into this binary. You guys know how I feel about binary thinking. J. Cole is really trying to, like, not be, like, boxed in in terms of what he he wants to say. Like, let the kids be kids. But also to the kids, think about your impact. Think about what you're doing with your money. Maybe. I'm not telling you what to do. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying, maybe think about it as your OG. But kids are hard-headed, and they don't have to listen to the OGs either. And that's fine, too. But just in case you want to, the information is out there, which I respect. Um, You know, like, oh, you may be popping right now, and that's cool, too. It's wonderful for you. It's great. But, like, I'm also still that nigga. So let me tell you a little something. Listen to your OGs, you know? Um, And just in general, I feel like right now you also have a lot of artists that are taking a stand and are even putting down on wax that they see what is going on, which I think is really necessary. You know, you have labels, you have these shitty ass fucking bloggers, these shitty ass fucking reviewers, all this payola and all these people and white people especially that are trying to fucking take over and push this idea of who and what we are and who and what our culture is. And you have some artists that are going right along with it for a check. And then you have other artists that are saying like, nah, this is not cool. And J. Cole explicitly talks about how, you know, you have these white kids that want to be black, how they think that this is how it feels if they eventually grow up, <clears throat> Miley motherfucking Cyrus, and have you have how you have artists that are going to go along with it because they just want their money for right now. And like, okay, fine. Like he says, fine. Love to see a black person get paid. Fine. Get your money right now. But as your OG now at 33 years old, let me also give you this wisdom and 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 maybe you know I was on money pussy parties the same as you but there might be a bigger picture that I want you to see now and not when it's too late and you're on love and hip hop and I thought it was great I love 1985 I thought it was great and again Cole was spitting 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 bars 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 like killing it um killing it just killing it I wasn't sure how I would feel based on the subject matter but uh, try like I've said previously trauma and addiction were also running themes in 444 and seat at the table and and um I I'm happy to see artists tackling some of these issues and some of these thoughts and considering you know impact versus intent what is your impact you know where is this going um and just again with this album i feel like j cole finally matured a little bit and figured out how to say what he wants to say without being judgmental because that is something that you have to fucking figure out it is a fine line um that you have to walk and i think he just showed so much growth and maturity um and I really love this album. I mean, and I'm still listening to it. And I just thought that it was fucking great. Like, standout album. I fit, I considered it to be an instant classic. So, that is my review. KOD, J. Cole. I know it's long. Uh, for those of you that, again, are new here, my review videos are also very long. They're in-depth. Uh, so, we do things a little bit differently around here than other people. So, let me know what you guys thought if you heard it. Um, there will be uh, links. To, because I also reviewed 444 and A Seat at the Table. I mentioned um, those albums a lot. So there will be links to those reviews in the description box. Uh, thanks for that as always. See you guys next time. Peace.